Hello, I am continuing my ranking of every episode of The Office. This episode, I am covering numbers 85 to 76. Starting to get close, starting to get uh, to the good ones. Well, they're all good ones, actually, but well, actually, no. The, the season 89 sucked, but so we're, we're, we're in the middle of the good ones. Here we go. Season one, episode two. Diversity Day, Michael Scott's offensive recitation of Chris Rock's infamous N-words versus black people routine results in the Dunder Mifflin employees getting a racial tolerance seminar by Mr. Brown. Michael is sick of it and makes up his own. Jim loses one of his big, big commissions for the year. So um, <laughs> so this is really, this is, this is the second ep ever episode of The Office, and the pilot was basically a shot for shot remake of the British office um, uh, show. This was really the first real episode of The Office, and they they really hit the ground running. Um, if you weren't, if you're not aware of the, the of that Chris Rock special, I believe it's called Never Scared. It was from I believe 1996, something like that. It is. Um, in my opinion, one of the greatest stand-up specials of all time. It was absolutely amazing. And it got a lot of people in trouble. A lot of white people in trouble. Because <laughs> it wasn't just Michael Scott uh, doing a recitation of this routine. It was everybody. Everybody. I, I remember people would 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 just recite it and they thought it was okay to say the n-word because chris rock said it and chris rock basically said oh there's good black people and bad black people and it just it it, it did not go well for white people <laughs> there was no there was no justification for for them getting away with with saying anything about this so um so so for him to say this is uh at, in a workplace is is crazy um so yeah they have a I think this is the first of two in a row of uh, times where where corporate had to come down and do a seminar based on something Michael did. Um, so Larry Wilmore, who I believe was an, a writer on The Office, uh, was Mr. Brown. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, so yeah, he does he does his own. Uh, racial tolerance seminar and michael says it's stupid and dumb so michael does his own and it involves everybody putting a uh index card on their head of what of of a random stereotype and people had to to um to talk to them about that stereotype or something like that it was, it was really really offensive um uh, Dwight, I think, had Asian or something on his forehead. So Pam says, okay, if I have to do this based on stereotypes that are totally untrue, that I do not believe in, you would not be a very good driver. And Dwight says, oh, man, am I a woman? Um, and Michael goes to Kelly, who is not the Kelly that we know. It's just, you know, it's 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 tone it's, it's it's a whole different person basically but but she is indian and so she he is doing all this you know typical indian um convenience store stupid stuff and kelly can't take it anymore and she smacked him i think in real life i think they did this take like many many times and she had to smack him over and over again and that that could not have felt good because <laughs> those look like real smacks um one of my favorite quotes in the whole series is when Michael does his he he makes his own video and he didn't have, really have that much time, but he has a takes a video of himself saying, Abraham Lincoln once said, "If you're racist, I will attack you with the North," and and I carry those principles with me in the workplace. <laughs> so stupid. Um. So th the thing about Jim, Jim had his one client that every year accounted for like a quarter of his yearly salary or some some something like that and all he has to do he doesn't have to do much he just has to call him and renew the order and dwight steals it from him and i i, I is this the basis for why he tormented dwight for years i don't know i don't know i mean that was a crappy thing for dwight to do but still 
whatever. Um, so he's he's pretty upset about that. But then during the seminar, Pam falls asleep on Jim's shoulder and he is so happy. And so he ends up on a talking head saying that it was actually a good day because Pam slipped on his shoulder. So, okay. Number 84, season two, episode two, sexual harassment. Traveling salesman Todd Packer arrives and makes the whole office uncomfortable. Jan forces Michael to take sexual harassment training. Pam's mom visits Thunder Mifflin, Jim. Uh, and yeah, so this is the first time we see uh, Todd Packer. Uh, I think we heard from him before, but this is the first time we actually saw him. He comes in, just makes a whole bunch of stupid jokes, um, and no, nobody, nobody likes it. Uh, uh, I think he says that Jim's like, "Who has two thumbs and is gay?" Jim Halpert, and Jim Jim Halpert says, "Who has two thumbs and hates Todd Packer?" This guy. Uh, <laughs> Michael says a, a great quote. He says, "Toby is an HR, which means he works for corporate." So he's not really part of our family. Also, he's divorced, so he's not really part of his family. Uh, there is one of the iconic scenes in this where um, basically this is this is another case where, where I, I think it was Michael because of all the that's what she said jokes. I think that's why they had this uh, um, sexual harassment training. And he says, this is my, you could, you could consider this my retirement from comedy in the future. If you want to say something funny or witty or do an impression, I will no longer do any of those things. And Jim just goads him on. And he says, does that include, that's what she said. Wow. That's really hard. You really think you could last that long all day long? Well, you always left me satisfied and smiling. And Michael says, that's what she said. <laughs> Jim breaks her back into the office. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing with Pam's mom, Pam's mom, uh, visits, and Jim is about to introduce himself, but Roy and is looking all preppy, and and he comes in and and gives her a hug, and then they they go away. Uh, but at one point, uh, Pam's mom says to her, "Which one is Jim?" So clearly, uh, Pam has been talking to his her mom about Jim. Number 83, season four, episode two, Dunder Mifflin Infinity. This was a two-parter. Michael feels threatened when Ryan returns to the Scranton office to share his ideas about the future of Dunder Mifflin. Jim's, Jim and Pam's relationship is shared with the entire office, and Dwight's and Angela's relationship is on the rocks. Uh, yeah, so this is... Um, Toby, the cold open is Toby sees Jim and Pam kissing... And he is not happy. So he sends out a memo about PDA. And uh, Michael says, is this about me and Jan? Shut your mouth. Is this, is this about me and Jan? And, and Toby says, no, it's actually about Jim and Pam. And that's how everybody finds out that Jim and Pam are going out. And Pam says, oh, Toby, is that your cute way of of uh, telling everybody about you know of, about a relationship and he's like uh yeah <laughs> uh but toby is really upset about it at one point um jim and pam go to toby and say hey we have to fill out one of those uh you know we're going out together forms he's like no you don't this isn't gonna last or something like that um <laughs> uh, one of the one of the great underrated lines in the entire series is when Jim and Pam are in the break room. Phyllis comes over and says, Hey, Pam, by the way, it's great that you're dating, but when a new client calls, you just have to randomly assign them to a salesperson. You can't base who gets new clients on who you're sleeping with that week. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Phyllis. Um, but the main uh, thing about this uh, episode and the, the, this two-parter is Ryan is now in Thunder Mifflin corporate. He is Michael's boss, and he is basically trying to bring the company into the digital age. He gives everybody Blackberries, and he's talking about the Thunder Mifflin Infinity website where you just order on the web. And first, at first, Michael is fine with this, but then Creed tells him, Hey, he's he's going after all the old people. You're you and me are we're we're out of here. And Creed starts acting all young and tries to use the hip lingo and he and he 
dyes his hair black. He uses all the printer ink and dyes his hair black. Um, and uh, Michael t- Michael talks to Jan, who uh, is has been fired, but but she she visits and and she talks about ageism. And uh, so Michael just gets really anti-technology and anti any change. And uh, he says, we should, we need to do things the old way. So he brings in Robert Dunder, half of the, you know, founder of Don, Dunder Mifflin. And he starts rambling or something like that during a meeting. So Michael's like, get out of here. <laughs> like the poor guy is just got, just got shoot out of the meeting. Um, right. When Ryan comes in, Kelly tells Ryan that she's pregnant and, he, and she's really not. That's a horrible thing to do. Um, the, the, the whole thing with Angela and Dwight is Dwight killed her cat and Angela cannot get past that. And they try to go out and they try to have a nice dinner. But Angela says, I just can't do this because all I think about is my dead cat. So she she basically dumps him. And then part two was, um, okay, so <laughs> so the cold open for part two was Toby brings in a girlfriend, and, and Jim and Pam are talking at the reception desk. Toby brings in his girlfriend and just gives her this long kiss, and you know, like like introduces her to everybody, and just gives her this long kiss, and then she leaves. And I guess that was to stick it to jim and pam or something like that i have no idea in real life that was his his uh his wife so <laughs> and she's beautiful so way to go paul lieberstein wow um uh, michael gets a bunch of gift baskets and he wants to go to the customers that left them this year and give them gift baskets to to get them back and nobody will do it. Everybody thinks it's a dumb idea, but Dwight will go along because Dwight will do anything Michael says. And they go to a play. They go to a couple places, and the people say, "I don't care. We're we're uh, you know we're we're not coming back." And that that makes Michael pretty upset. But then he he's all about this GPS, you know, technology, and uh. He, Dwight is saying, like it says, make a right here. And so Michael makes a right. And Dwight's like, you can't go right here. You're going into a lake. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. That's what it said. It told me to go here. And like, Dwight's like, you're, you're going into the lake. And he drives into the lake. <laughs> and and uh, that was just that was just an amazing scene. And it, at least Michael is considered enough to leave the door open for the camera guy so he doesn't die i guess i don't know i don't know uh it's so it's so silly but i mean do you remember those tom tom things those gps things sometimes they would say stupid things sometimes they would say like you know turn right into the river sometimes like okay i'm on a bridge what do you want me to do here it's like it's really really silly um ryan goes to pam and says Hey, could you make make some uh, ideas for logos for the for the new website? She's like, "Yeah, I'd love to." And then she shows them, and Ryan says, "Hey, we should go on a date. Wear something nice." And Pam's like, "Uh, I'm dating Jim." And he's like, "Really?" <laughs> and Jim's like, "Hi." <laughs> that was good. Uh, Michael is so upset about his car drowning and uh, the, the, the customer is not coming back. Then he goes back to one of the customers that he gave a gift, a gift basket to. It says, I want my, I want my ba- gift basket back. <laughs> and, and then, and then they go through the basket and say, where's the chocolate truffles? <laughs> like just screaming at this guy, where's our chocolate truffles? And I was like, Hey, I ate them. Oh my goodness. Um so Michael is just so he's anti-technology. He says people will never be replaced by machines. In the end, life and business are about human connections, and computers are about trying to murder you in a lake. And to me, the choice is easy. There you go. 
Number 82, season seven, episode two, counseling. After physically reprimanding his nephew, Luke, in the previous episode, Michael is forced to undergo six hours of counseling with Toby. Angry about the situation, he refuses to take it seriously at first, and Toby eventually guides him toward opening up, but Michael catches on about being tricked and lashes out. And Dwight has his pretty woman moment. <laughs> also, Pam schemes to make herself office administrator when she realizes she's not cut out for sales. So, oh, and the cold open was um, Jim and Pam are always late because they got to go across town to drop off the, the kid, the baby at the daycare center. And Dwight says, oh, I, I have a daycare center because Dwight just bought the, the office building. He says, I have a daycare center and it's basically just mows and some buckets and some plastic forks and knives and uh it's so it's so bad it was actually the same closet that that they used for michael scott paper company and they they jim said well who who would be watching the kids and dwight says nobody's gonna watch the kids we'll lock the door and they can't get out so and and jim's like oh yeah well let let me check that so he closes the door He lock he closes the lights and locks the door on Dwight and Moe's. <laughs> they're they're locked in. Um so yeah, in the previous episode, um, which I'm I'm about to talk about, uh, uh Michael hired his nephew Luke, and he was like the worst person ever, and he couldn't take it anymore. And he bends over the 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 nephew and just starts spanking him. And uh they say Okay, your choices are either be fired or do counseling with Toby. And he has to think long and hard about that, those, those, uh, those choices. But he chooses um, counseling with Toby. And he just totally, he says, okay, fine. If I have to spend six hours with you, whatever. And he just totally just stares at him and tells him stupid things. And it's just, just, just totally doesn't take it seriously. So finally, Toby says, okay, fine. I give up. Do whatever you want. I have some games here that that I play with with my daughter. Let's just play games that run out the clock. Like, okay. And they play Connect Four and, and card games and stuff like that. And as they're doing that, then Michael opens up. And it's and it's an actual like therapy session. And Dwight, I mean, um, Toby's actually reaching out to him and they're actually connecting. But then Michael figures out what he he's doing and he says, Oh, I see what you're doing. Screw you. And he's he just he just signs it or whatever. And, and then there was something about Gabe sent it, but he but he checked off all the wrong things or something like that. So uh, Michael says, "That's like okay, you know what? You suck, but Gabe sucks more. So we're good. So let's just do this the, the right way." So they actually have their therapy session or whatever. Uh, the thing about Dwight and the whole pretty woman thing, it was actually really cute it's at i i love any time dwight and jim get together and basically what happened was dwight said to everyone uh everybody don't go whatever you do don't do business with steamtown mall they're they're horrible people and they they snubbed me and they they, they took pictures of me and they made fun of me and, and people everybody felt bad and so they said well let's do a pretty woman thing let's make let's, let's give you a, a makeover and you could go back and say, oh, yeah, well, you work on commission. You just made a big mistake, like in, like in Pretty Woman. And so Jim and Andy help him do it with his makeover. And it's uh, it's really cute. It's really, like I said, anytime Dwight and Jim get together, it's 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 awesome. Uh, they go back to the mall and Dwight is all made over and, and pretty now. And he says. Oh, do you remember me? And the guy's like, "Yeah, I remember you. You you came in here and uh, you look like a murderer. So <laughs> we we asked you to come back when you when you clean up. And because Dwight was just at the farm working on beets, and his hands were were like red, and it looked like he just he, he had blood all over his hands. <laughs> so so the 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 salespeople were frightened. So whenever um." Whenever, whenever Jim and, and Andy hear this, they're like, "Okay, whatever. This is, this is not. This is whatever." And uh, yeah, Dwight says, "Actually, I'll buy that thing." So, so they all, they all made it up. 
Um, Pam basically just just names herself office administrator and gets everybody to go along with it. And then when Gabe figures out, hey, you were never office administrator. You're just you're just making this up. Uh, Pam said, oh, yeah, we'll call my bluff. And, and came back down. <laughs> Pam said something like, this is what this is what you get when you watch, uh, you know, poker for at two in the morning. You you learn you learn to get a good poker face. So uh, that's funny. I, I There was a scene where Dwight was just about to leave for the mall. Aaron takes a picture. And so like, wait, let me take a picture. She, she takes a picture with a disposable camera, does not understand that a disposable camera <laughs> what, what it doesn't understand what a disposable camera is and she, as soon as she takes the picture she throws away the camera she said she said you know if you want to take picture actual pictures you want to see i would recommend not using a disposable camera that was cute number 81 season 7 episode 10 china when michael reads an article about china growing as a global power he decides they must be stopped before they take over the United States. When Oscar contradicts him and is proven wrong, he is taunted by the entire office. And Pam threatens to move Dunder Mifflin to a new building after everyone in the office complains about Dwight's building standards. And Daryl is sick of Annie's annoying text messages. Um, the cold open was really stupid. Dwight insisted on doing everything with his feet, including typing, drinking, which he spelled hot he spilled hot coffee all over himself it was it was really stupid um so so yeah my, dwight took over the the building and he put in all these things to save money he 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 cut the 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 toilet paper he had he had nate take it from two ply to one ply um he 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 closed the lights all the time uh, he put a, a giant um, banner over the side of the building so that nobody could see out of it for an exterminator. Uh, it was it was really silly. And Pam says, "Oh yeah, we're not going to put up with this. We'll move." And she she gets these pictures of this new office building, and she's like, "Oh yeah, it's 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 awesome. We could leave in three months." And there actually was no office building. She was just she just made it up. She just got the the things the pictures from the internet. So, so he basically, uh, so Dwight basically tells her, you're, you, you know, he calls her bluff and she's talking to Jim and says, listen, I'm a, I'm a failure at everything. I was a failure at sales. I was a failure at art school. I was a failure at everything. And Pam goes to reassure her. And you know, she says, I don't want to be a failure at this office administrator thing too. And Dwight overhears this and basically uh gives basically plants the the uh the 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 rule the uh, book of laws um that shows that that Dwight is actually breaking the law so he lets her win so that was that was very sweet and uh and when when he sees that that Pam is so happy he's he's happy too so that's that was really sweet number 80 season 3 episode 15 Phyllis's wedding <laughs> Phyllis's wedding has arrived. In order to get six weeks to leave for her honeymoon, Michael she asked Michael to be in the wedding party, which ramps up his social awkwardness up to eleven. And Pam notices the wedding is really familiar, and Dwight become is is guarded against wedding crashers. Uh, the cold open was amazing. It was actually a good. Uh, uh, example of uh, Pavlov is it Pavlov uh, where every time Jim's uh, computer rebooted it would make that Windows noise ding do 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 uh, he would he would give Dwight Altoids and so he kept training Dwight to take these Altoids every time his computer rebooted and, and heard that noise and then Jim's computer rebooted and Dwight's like, give me, give me the, the, give me the Altoids. And Jim's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't know. And my, and my mouth feels so dry. <laughs> so I believe that was actually a correct application of that, of the Pavlovian uh, experiment. Um, basically this entire episode is, yeah, it's Phyllis's wedding, but Michael tries to make it all about him. And uh, he goes back to when he was a little kid at his mom's wedding 
and he it did not go well and he he wet his pants and he threw the ring and it was just a it was just a big mess um his job in the wedding is to push phyllis's father who is in a wheelchair and so to make it look like he's co-giving away the bride and the father the father in this dramatic moment um gets up from the uh from the wheelchair and uh walks his daughter down the aisle and everybody's clapping and michael is mad as hell because it takes away the moment from him um it's just that was just this entire episode he he just he so made it so much about himself that uh that he actually got kicked out um the, the <laughs> during the wedding the priest says and do you, Phyllis, take Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration, to be your lovely wedded husband? I love, I love that it's always Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. It's almost like his full full name or something like that. Um, when uh, everybody, um, the best man gives a, gives a speech, and probably the the maid of honor, or something like that. And then Michael gives a speech, and he says. Webster's dictionary defines wedding as the fusing of two metals with a hot torch. Well, you know something? I think you guys are two metals, gold medals. And, and they says, and, uh, and for those that don't me- know me, I'm Michael Scott, Phyllis's boss. And to quote the Prince's Bride, marriage. I love that's one of my favorite scenes of all time. Marriage is what brings us together. Um, and then he starts going on because I, I they went to high school together. How uh, Phyllis's nickname was Easy Rider or something like that, and that's and Bob Vance is like that's a, that's a get out of here, and, and he kicks Michael out of the of the wedding. Uh, and, and the, the thing about Dwight, you know, like Jim, Jim uh, tells Dwight that he needs to be he has to watch against wedding crashers. And so Dwight sees this old guy who's who doesn't know where he is. He's like, oh, you must be a wedding crasher. Get out of here. And it was actually um, Uncle Al, who's senile. And <laughs> um, Kevin's band, Sync Scrantonicity, is playing the wedding. And he says, he says, attention, everyone, attention. I'm supposed to ask if anyone has seen Uncle Al. He is old and has brown eyes and dementia. His family is very concerned. It is a very serious situation. Then and then immediately goes, Roxy! He starts singing. <laughs> so funny. Um, Phyllis threw the wedding bouquet and Ryan, it was about to go to Kelly, but Ryan like pushed it to to, to, to uh, Toby's date or something like that. Um the there was the whole thing with, with Jim and Pam where um Pam basically got the, back together with Roy um cuz uh, you know and then Jim was with um Karen and Jim saw that Pam went back to with Roy and I think he was pretty upset but then he looks at Karen having a good time and singing he said like, you know what I made the right choice or, or something like that Number 79, season seven episode 13 ultimatum Pam puts up a new year's resolution board in the office Aware of Holly's ultimatum to her boyfriend, AJ, that he proposed to her before New Year's or the relationship ends. Michael is ecstatic when he sees her come back to work ringless, but his joy turns out to be premature. Uh, The cold open was it's late at night at the office and um, Jim forgot his phone. So he goes back to the office and he walks in on Dwight's um, group. They're called Knights of the Night. And uh, they're like, they're like the... uh, guardian angels or something like that and dwight is really upset it's like jim you're just gonna make fun of us and jim's like no whatever i mean it is pretty goofy but, <laughs> um but they're 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 going over the meanings of the meeting uh notes of the, of the previous uh meeting and they said uh they they played flashlight flashlight tag and that was that was pretty cool they said dwight said their goal was, was to catch a scran strangler and he was caught just not by them um so when when Holly comes back, Michael is with Aaron and he's making two videos and he says the the best person to talk himself up or down is himself. 
So he's making one video if Holly is engaged and one video if Holly is not engaged. And uh, it turns out Holly is not engaged. So he is uh, celebrating with with uh, with Aaron, and there's a famous uh, gift from this where he's spraying the champagne and Aaron like all over Aaron, and um, but that was it was just really funny. He is celebrating with Aaron, and he plays a video of himself talking himself down. It's like whoa, and and like he's 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 dancing with himself, and it was it was it was really cute. Um, Dwight, Andy, and Daryl go to a bookstore to pick up girls and uh, it does not go well, but Daryl sees a, um, he, he wants to get a book because Daryl's um, new year's resolution was to read more. And uh, the lady gives him a, an, one of those e-readers and Daryl's says, Oh no, no, I can't, I can't have this. I work for a paper company with those things. Those things kill us. Uh, and, uh, but he buys it anyway and he, he falls in love with his e-reader, but he has to like hide it from, uh, from Andy and Dwight. Um, so they go to what Dwight wants to go to the strip club and Daryl says, no, 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 you do not want to go to a strip club during the day. <laughs> and yeah, so they end up going roller skating and it's just them three in the whole, in the roller skate thing. And they're, uh, they have a good time. Uh, the, so the whole thing with the, with the resolutions, Pam has everybody put up resolutions. Uh, Michael's was to floss. Um, Pam's was to drink less caffeine. Um, Angela said make time for romance with the senator. Kevin's was to eat more vegetables. Creed's was to do a perfect cartwheel. Meredith was Meredith was two cigarettes a day. Um, Stanley's was be a better husband and boyfriend. <laughs> Um, Dwight's was meet a loose woman's. <laughs> um, oh, and, and, and Kelly's was get more attention by any means necessary. <laughs> um, so the, the basically it goes horribly wrong. Um, Pam has a has a meaning about it, and he he he's he basically projects. Oh, oh, oh so what, what he finds out about Holly is. Holly did not get engaged, but he's she's still going out with AJ and she still she says and she still calls him and says, I love you. So they're still going together. And this really upsets Michael. And he basically lashes out at the at everyone. And he's basically shoving a broccoli into uh, Kevin's mouth. And Kevin's like <laughs> Kevin's like so disgusted and he spits it out everywhere like a like a baby. Um, and he's just, he just yells, he just yells at everyone and Holly sees what's going on and she just runs away crying and she's just really upset about it. And Michael feels really bad about making her feel bad, but in the end, Holly calls AJ and breaks it off and, 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 and um, drops a relationship. So, uh, whatever Creed actually gets to do his cartwheel. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically the the resolutions went to hell. Everybody got mad, so Pam just threw the thing in the, in the dumpster. So number seventy eight, season three, episode two, the convention. Michael and Dwight go to a convention in Philadelphia and run into Jim, and Michael becomes jealous of Jim's relationship with his new boss. Pam gets ready for a first gate, first date since her engagement. Um. I forget why the cold open is Michael wants to, uh, Michael goes to Pam and wants to adopt a baby. And um, Pam says, Hey, that's really expensive. And Mike says, um, find out if there's a cheaper, less expensive baby out there. Okay. Uh, but this is basically Dwight and Michael go to Philadelphia and they see Jim and uh, the boss from Scranton and uh, Jan comes and it's just really awkward because Michael is upset with Jim for leaving. Michael thinks it's Jim left because of him or something like that. So he's, he's pretty upset with him um, there. Jim and uh, I forget his name are talking and they, they, they laugh about something and, and Jim says, Oh, it was, it was an inside joke. 
And Michael says, I love inside jokes. I love to be part of one someday. I use this quote all the time. This is one of my favorite quotes. Um, at this convention, Jerome Bettis of the Pittsburgh Steelers is he is there and he's signing things. And Michael tries to get him to come to his party. And as as Michael and Dwight are leaving, Dwight says, Why do they call him the bus? And, and Michael says, Because he's afraid to fly. Yeah, that's not why. Um Toby finds out that Pam is, you know, dating again, and he tries to work up the courage to ask her out, but he can't. So um, Pam goes out on this date. It's Pam and this cartoonist with uh, with Kelly and Ryan, and it just does not go well. It's there's 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 no connection there. So even though Michael is this is this is just. Michael in a nutshell. He's a bumbling idiot. He's he's spending he's all about making this huge party and he's he's ma- he's making himself look like an idiot in front of Jim and his boss and Jan. Even through all throughout all that, he works out a deal with Hammer Mill products. Um Hammer Mill was exclusive with Staples or Office Depot or something like that. And Michael, Michael worked out a deal and Jan says, well, Mike, I underestimated you. And Michael says, yeah, well, maybe next time you will estimate me. Great line. Um, Angela was at this time, Angela and Dwight are secretly dating and she goes down to the convention to surprise Dwight and she is naked in his hotel room. And Jim comes in to prank him and he sees Angela, but he doesn't know it's Angela. And he just runs away. He's like, oh my God, Dwight got a hooker. <laughs> um, in the end, Michael throws a party in his hotel room. Nobody comes. Surprise, surprise. But Jim comes down and Michael says, you know, I'm so, you know, why, why, you know, why do you hate me? Why, what was it? What, you left because of me. And Jim said, no, I, I left because of Pam. So this was the beginning of season three. So this is when, when, uh, when Jim was still in Stanford. Number 77, season two, episode 18, take your daughter to work day. A routine office day is changed when children come to Dubner Mifflin for take your daughter to work day. Michael is surprised when he strikes up a friendship with five-year-old daughter of a sworn enemy, Toby. Pam is desperate to befriend her her colleagues, um, kids, and a misunderstanding puts Ryan under Stanley's thumb. <laughs> um, the cold open is that Pam is excited about take your daughter to work day. Uh, he, I guess she wants to have kids someday, so she wants to connect with a kid. Michael hates it because he he likes to do his rated R jokes and he doesn't want to make it rated G. Um, so yeah, it was, it was Toby's daughter was there. Kevin's, uh, fiance's daughter uh, was there. Um, Meredith's, Meredith's son and Stanley's daughter and Stanley's daughter has a crush on Ryan and she's flirting with him. And this, this makes Kelly really (laughs) jealous and angry. So she goes to Stanley and just says, I want you just want you to know that Ryan is flirting with your daughter. And Ryan takes him into the break room and says, Boy, have you lost your mind? Because I help you find it. What you're looking for ain't gonna ain't nobody gonna help you out there. Jesus could come through that door. He's not gonna help you if you don't start sniffing after my child. And and um Ryan has a talking head. He's like, Okay, uh Stanley yelled at me. That was the scariest moment of my life. Um the Michael goes around and introduces people and he says, uh, hey, everybody, this is Creed. Creed is something. And Creed's like, yes, that's right. And then Creed says, hey, have you ever seen a foot with four toes? <laughs> and all the kids are like, yay. Um, there was one. This is one of the more underrated scenes in, in the entire series when Toby's daughter, who's only like five years old, she goes up to Phyllis and says, are you Mother Goose? I can totally see how you would think that. Um, yeah, so um, Michael 
tells the kids that he actually he was on a kid's show called when he was a kid called Fundle Bundle. And he is on a show and he's and the one of the characters talks to him and that they he says, What do you want to be when you grow up, Michael? And Michael says, I want to be married and have lots of kids so that I can have friends and they can't uh they can't not be friends with me. And the, the character looks like every, everybody looks like, like, oh my God, what, this is this is really messed up. Um and the end, he said, Michael says, I am signing up with an online dating service. Thousands of people have done it, and I'm gonna do it. I need a username, and I have a great one. Little kid lover. That way people know exactly where my priority is priorities are at. Uh Kevin's um um fiance's daughter was actually played by Kaylee Daniels, who is the daughter of producer Greg Daniels. And she has actually gone on to become a writer and and develop her own shows, just like her dad. So that's uh that's really cool. She uh she in this in in this episode, um, Pam is trying to connect with her and it doesn't work, but Jim is able to because they well, they read read this this kid's book or something like that. So Number 76, season seven, episode one, nepotism. Michael upsets the office when he ignores or pleads to fire office assistant Luke, Michael's immature nephew. Pam's attempt to prank, to prank Dwight backfires when Kevin's faulty rewiring of an elevator strands the two together. And Kevin, Andy grows even more upset with Gabe and Aaron's relationship. So this is the first episode of season seven. The cold open was one of those lip dubs. It was um, that song, nobody can do the blah, 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 like I do, nobody, nobody. And it was actually like perfect and amazing. And apparently they all did it in one take. So that was that was amazing. But uh, really, really, really well done. Um, there's not much else to this episode. Um, Andy, yeah, I mean, the, the so during the summer. Um, Gabe basically stole Andy from uh, Aaron from Andy and Aaron basically said that she was going out with him because she had to so that's I mean I hate <laughs> I hate Andy and I hate Gabe so I hate everything about that um, at this point uh, um, Dwight bought the office building and he had the this uh, this ring of keys and Jim's prank was that he was going to add keys every day to it to make it heavier and heavier. And eventually Dwight's pants were going to fall. Well, Pam sees this and, and, and laughs and Dwight, Dwight catches him doing it. So basically Pam ruins the, the joke for, uh, for Jim and Pam feels really bad about that. So she she has Kevin rewire the, the elevator, which breaks the elevator. So Pam and Dwight are stuck on the elevator together. And um, Dwight just starts peeing immediately in a corner because because he's been drinking water all day. And um, basically... Basically, she, Pam is still pretty proud of herself that she did a prank on Dwight, even though it did not go well. Uh, but the main thing about this episode was they have this assistant, Luke, and he is the worst. He's just terrible at his job. He gets everybody coffee and it's all wrong. He just does everything wrong. He he causes them to lose a bunch of customers because he didn't he didn't um, deliver a bunch of stuff. He's just horrible. Everybody complains about him. But Michael says, well, I don't care because he's my nephew. And he even says, oh, yeah, well, was God using nepotism when he got Jesus, when he used Jesus? Huh? Like, OK, you're compla compla <laughs> comparing yourself to God. OK. Uh, eventually, it gets so bad. There, he had a meeting and Luke was being horrible and not listening and just basically being like a like a like a bratty kid, even though he was, you know, a teenager. He was, you know, pretty, pretty old. And eventually Michael can't take it anymore. And he puts him over his knee and he spanks him. And um and the and the kid runs away. And everybody's actually happy with Michael. <laughs> Everybody and they're like they're like reenacting it. They're all taking turns like spanking each other and stuff. 
<laughs> um, but Gabe says, uh, that's not cool. You just assaulted an employee. So <laughs> not good. So you're you're um you have two choices either you're fired or you have to do counseling with Toby and Michael <laughs> has to think long and hard about it. Um but yeah that was that was basically the episode. All right, that is it. So we are now down to the top 75. Pretty exciting. Um I am I am loving this. Hope hope you like it too. I'm gonna keep doing this till the end. So Thanks for listening or watching. See ya.